So here we are uh, with another session of mapping the wilderness in Bardstale 3. Uh, this is Jay Rodman. Um, I'm going to try to make an effort in this session to uh, talk a little less because I don't actually have that much to say while mapping and um, just focus on making progress and see comment when notable events, interesting things happen. That is the wrong song.
are surrounding something. the gloves.
I guess I'm gonna have my rogue start shooting arrows instead of just trying to hide because she pretty much always fails at hiding right now. Leveling up will make her better at hiding. Dexterity will make her better at hiding. Certain items will make her much better at hiding.
always kind of found Land Reaver to be, um, I don't know, it's evocative, but is it evocative of a, a man with a sword? basically done.
here is the storage house. just moving the focus in keyboard mode maybe that's not clear enough but um, it's clear enough for me in fact I probably should hide the avatar how, how do we do this hi, hi show there you go that loses my uh, convenient easy memory of where I've been but I'm actually not too worried about that here either I've gone down the street or I haven't and it's easy to hit all streets check the buildings just in case anything's interesting in them and I guess it's becoming a little unclear um, what's inside and what's outside so I'm going to start using um, there's a tool where is this floor no where's block mode So can I can I use this? I guess that's um I guess I want a paler color. Something more subtle to indicate indoors. Error. Oh, I have to switch, switch the color back. I wonder if there's a way to default that. I could also just do it after the fact. Which I may do. my mistake here? Oh, it doesn't go that far? I, I have all of this wrong. It's only two steps. Only two steps. So... close to that.
didn't think it was actually laid out like that. So we have it facing south at this location. Yeah, it turns around one little box. Okay. And I actually know all of the doors lead to just one room building, so I can start filling that in. I guess I should fill in the maps while the combat is running. I have more bows than arrows. In fact, it landed on the right person. Um, dagger, I think, is... I don't know if daggers can be thrown. Uh, if they can be, I guess I could give another dagger to my rogue, and my rogue could probably throw it. Drop these useless robes. Gave her. Oh, here's the, here's an unidentified gloves. Can I? Can mages? Mages can equip gloves. You know, I think I never knew that. I'm not gonna even bother to identify them. I'm pretty much certain they're leather gloves, and I don't really. Uh, you know, I I just never thought mages could equip gloves. Oh, I'm trying to use it. That's why it's. I think. I think that's why. No. Armor class 9, armor class 8. Mages can wear gloves. Can mages still cast spells while wearing gloves? Cast uh Tenuvio. I got to rename these guy these these ladies. These women. Uh is it quick fix or word of healing? Which one? She's got one of the two. Yeah, I can cast gloves, spells with gloves on. I don't think that mages could use gloves in Bard's Tale 1 or 2. Huh. Okay, so uh, I, I have not gone into the northern building. Which is empty. I feel like I want to use a different color for areas that are entirely inaccessible as compared to um, the houses. I guess it's a matter of sort of, I mean one way to do it would be show it as rubble, but I think that's not the game's logic. I think the game's logic is um, there are doors and walls.
15 damage. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't be so cavalier about walking up to Pumas. Uh, let's try throwing that dagger. Just to find out. I can't do throw daggers. Okay. Okay, I can't can't throw daggers. Some some weapons you can throw. There's some knives you can throw. I mean, I don't know. I guess in the greatest sense of medieval weapon accuracy, a dagger is a fairly long blade, not at all designed for throwing. But no guarantee of that being the way things actually play. There's a problem with the Mac keyboard where so when I try to press up cursor, I end up pressing shift because the cursor is so damn tiny. The other day I was playing with a USB full um, 104 or whatever keyboard plugged in. That was kind of nice. checking all of the buildings which is um, in a sense not needed because I kind of know already what's in all of them but that's just how it's done I'm going to use a dark oh I didn't mean to click on it Use some kind of dark. Oh, that's too bold. I'm going to use this dark color for areas that you can't get to at all. Kind of let the bard song expire. Didn't even notice. It's a little less crucial at this point. Um, you know, all my armor classes have dropped a bit. I have way more hit points. I have way more spell points to heal on my uh, warriors. But still, it's a free reduction in incoming damage, so... Two, three north and one, two, 
two, three, four, five, six, seven. East. So that's the end of the row of destroyed buildings. And the beginning of the next set. interesting that there's these ways to get into the same building from totally different directions. I think entirely pointless, but interesting. If one of these buildings was special, you would um, encounter it from various different directions, and that could make it easier to find, or more likely that you would find it. start adding coordinates to my map. Here we have zero north or south. Here's Scarabray so far. Looks like I was pretty um, sloppy. I'm going to even color this special building, the storage building. I'm going to just color it differently so it sort of stands out. Maybe the same intensity as the gray, but a different color, a different tone, a different hue more accurately. Let's find that statue. One, two. Okay, so here's where that statue is. I'm not going to record this.
this text. It doesn't seem that important. Oh, I got turned around. Let me make sure this statue. Yeah, it's where I thought it was. This row of houses continues for two, and then three, and then meets. <laughs> Putting down statues. Uh, and then we meet this wall from this side of the Grand Place. South, there's two doors here. There's a kind of different looking door here. Um, is it one north? It is. I feel like I should use a different marker for these f slightly fancier doors. Gate? I mean, it kind of doesn't matter what the system calls it. Um, but I feel like it does kind of look like a gate. I mean, look at, I mean, it's, it's a door, but it's kind of a gatey door. So I'm going to use these symbols for this case to make things stand out a little more. Three is walls on both sides, I guess. Getting to use the part song. I'm just going to change my order, which may cancel the part song, which will be kind of irritating. Yeah, the one, two. Four, three. Swapping the bard and the monk because I've played these games a fair bit and I kind of 
kind of always end up with the bar because of fours. I have it kind of hardwired in my brain. dagger more arrows if this was a roguelike um well if it was a good roguelike you would either not get so much loot or there would be like a very complicated system for how to avoid like like an angman for example you say this item is beneath, beneath my level of interest automatically destroy it before you show it to me so you can sort of say like no more daggers ever 
used for the same purpose as a steam in some games anyway. hit points during that round um, but I don't I don't like uh, the current level on Chantrell so I'm healing her Notice my arc fire that used to do like one damage now it does say ten damage. I think it scales with your base level. Some of the spells are actually not accurately described. At least in the Mars Temple and Manual. Maybe they got more accurate by Mars Temple 3. Typically, there's nothing really terrible wrong. Every once in a while, it'll say a spell reaches say 40 feet, but actually. So this is a, um, I'm going to keep on mapping and kind of spoiling it, but I kind of feel like if I don't spoil it in this way, it will be entirely incomprehensible in video form, rather than when you're navigating it yourself. Oh, well, first I want to... because um, in the first game the last character index was 6 so it was special than 1 through 6 so I tend to pick the wrong numbers sometimes my gauntlets trained them to Chris Mack Thank you. 
this a long time. And eventually we find out it's endless. Because this is Sinister Street.
I have to question the idea of having your main programmer be one of those dudes who play tester. I mean, I don't know, maybe he did lots and lots of it, but it just seems um, like stretching it a bit somehow. As if programmers aren't supposed to do any testing of their own work. Okay, and here's the... to go up, it turns out. Uh, constitution for Grisnek, always appreciated. <laughs> Intelligence for my paladin. Sad trombone. Constitution for the monk. That's a good stuff. It looks like the next level isn't that long off. Uh, Intelligence for a bard. That is quite bad. I've done something wrong. Okay, uh, dexterity for rogue, that is quite excellent. It gets in this mode where I press 5 and it doesn't want to take it. Anyway, whatever, spacebar gets out. Um, luck for a mage, and I think my mages are ready to learn more spells. Constitution for a mage, which is kind of better. Um, Maybe almost as good as intelligence. Spell acquiring for Stubby. And Stubby will try to pay. Spell acquiring for Tenuvio, which Stubby will pay for. Let's so checking out um, my new spells. I already had Mage Gauntlets. I think I had Area Enchant, which I mentioned is a funny spell that detects traps. Or no, it doesn't detect traps. It detects stairs. Only stairs. Anyway, whatever. Okay, now we get one of a major uh, power improvement. Well, I don't know if it seems that major, but it's really nice, I think. Stubby now has learned to be able to cast Mystic Shield. This is an ongoing buff which gives you two armor class better. Ogre Strength is sort of an improved Mage Gauntlets. It makes someone stronger for one fight. And Star Flare. So now we finally started getting into the area effect, as they were, spells. This spell will hit everyone in one group of enemies. So far, we've only really been seeing fights with one group, maybe one you know, one fizz widget or two slimes or six, you know, kobolds. But later there'll be um, fights with m multiple groups, up to four. Um, and Star Flare won't hit everyone in a fight, but will hit everyone in one group. So there could be like 20 kobolds, and this spell would hurt all of them. Well, it would try to hurt all of them. They can resist. Anyway, it's a major step up in power, although right now we don't really need it because the fights we're having are not hard. But that's partly because I'm just choosing the map. Okay. Um, meanwhile, my other spellcaster, this one, the Conjurer, it's got new Conjurer spells. Uh, this is the first one, Lesser Revelation. 
This is a different kind of buff. This produces an ongoing light in the dungeons, which you need some kind of light. If you have no light, you can't see Jack. Um, Lesser Revelation is not just a normal light, though. It will also show secret doors, and it illuminates a fair distance, which makes it easier to map. Not going to be useful to the dungeons, but nice to have. Here's another ongoing buff. There's, I think, four, five basic classes of ongoing buffs you can have, and we just got three of them. Not in necessarily their ideal forms, but whatever. Uh, this is levitation, which levitation is a little subtle. Um, if you have levitation going and you step on a trap, it's quite likely that the trap doesn't do anything. It's like you floated over it. Um, although if you walk back over it again later without it, you're very likely to trigger it. It's not a 100% guarantee that you don't trigger the trap. And this is another group damaging spell, War Strike. So both mages now have uh, group affecting spells, so we're much, much more powerful against groups of enemies now than we were just a short while ago. Sorry, I had to cough there, and I didn't want to treat you all to it. Um, oh, you all, as if my my thousands of viewers. I didn't want to repeat anyone watching this today, the coughing. Where's the color? It's off the top. So, um, I've now been to almost everywhere in this northern part of the city. There's a southern part of the city, too, that you can get to by turning south here. Although, uh, FYI, there's actually nothing interesting in it. Spoilers. How big is this town, anyway? I actually kind of feel like maybe I should adjust the grid because I think this is as far east as it goes. But maybe I'm not going to bother. Wow, fight every step. How much more did I need to go level up? 900 experience for most of them? Well, some of them anyway. That should be soon enough. And here is, I, I don't know, I feel like I should use something reddish. Reddish for, I don't know, it really, it's really jarring. Um, for a dungeon. Do we have a marker for dungeons? What should a dungeon look like? I guess it could just be the entrance marker. Or, oh, I think it just be stairs down. You know, that's, that's the way, that's the way into the cave, or the catacombs, the, the under earth. Uh, 
or even a ladder down. Nah, I think that um, this is a little literal, and I'm just going to um, I'm just going to put an entrance here. Uh, oh, I don't like the way that looks. Okay, here we go. Temple of, and that's got temple. That, that God's temple. Uh, so you can speak to the priest, and they tell you only those who know the name of the mad god are welcome. What wilt thou say? And lots of things have told us the name is Tarjan. If we answer them. They say, speak not the name of the High One so loudly, lest he answer. I guess the Mad God isn't the kind of God you worship for him to bring you gifts. He's the God you worship to not kill you. Enter the Catacombs Believer. I do wonder how the, you know, um, sort of economics of the situation work. Like, how exactly do they get their food and all of that? Anyway, um, you have to actually switch a disc, and the you know you pull out one floppy disk, put another floppy disk on the right side, and it says there's stairs here. Do you wish to take them? And if I say no, what well, what am I looking at? I'm looking at darkness. I'm looking at nothing. So let's use a lamp. And there's my ongoing buff of light, and I can start looking around in the dungeon. There's this initial message. Smoldering ruins smell odd and seem somewhat unfocused. It seems very much as if they do not belong here at all. Something very alien is present. So somehow the ruins under the Mad God's Temple are otherworldly and wrong. Um, it becomes... In, in, in dungeons, when we uh, turn, it doesn't tell you you're facing north or whatever. You either just have to know, or more likely, you cast the magic compass spell uh, with the person who knows it. And now you can see which way you can face. But if the spell runs out or is cancelled, you can't tell anymore. If you run out of spell points, you may not get to have a orientation anymore. However, there's an auto map feature. We can press the question mark. And the auto map feature in the counter 64 is a little wonky. Um, in the Amiga version, and I think the DOS version, um, well, on this level, I think actually on all versions, it just shows you the whole map. This may be sort of the starter dungeon, and they're like, look, we're going to take it easy on you. Uh, and you can see in the bottom left is where we entered. Um, it doesn't actually tell us this, but whatever, I know. And that weird, tiny, almost incomprehensible mark, the square thing at the intersection of those two of the at the T um, is us. That's trying to tell us where us where we are. You can kind of make out the the doors as little ticks in the walls. Um, it's you know it's uh it's 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 primitive. Commodores didn't have that many pixels. It was tough to get this much detail in there. Um, but. This, of course, makes it easier to map. Now, some people might just play without a map because of this, you, and you can do that. But if you do that, then you have kind of no notes about where things are and so on. So it's a awkward place because in this game you can cast these things and it like trivializes map mapping, and that's fine actually. You know, you can spend less time carefully creating them, I guess. And um, but it's not at all complete. Like you can't notate anything in the game and you do need to record things not necessarily on every location but on some of them for sure and I think that's enough of this dungeon for me for right now I just wanted to sort of show it because I encountered it and now back to the
character disk where we save and where the overworld is implemented. one died right now. Oh, also, we've passed the threshold where many fighters start getting multiple attacks. So, here's another fight. Two for one. Let's see how they do. Grisnak got hurt. A strong the arm hits for 26 points of damage, 16 points of damage. That's enough to do them in. 16 points of damage is so much lower. Does Lady Oak have a health bar that Let's just make sure. Maybe she just doesn't have the strength. She has strength 20. That should be mostly enough. And a halberd. Well, then again, they are s they have a lot of um, variation in the amount of damage they do. So maybe she was just lucky. Anyway, I think I'm going to stop this recording here. Um, I've shown all of the tricks, the new tricks that we have now that we're level 5. I've shown most of the map.